What is up, you guys? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to show you guys the new makeup by Caudalie. Now, I know Caudalie because of their Beauty Elixir, which is this beautiful beauty mist. I've been loving it since, I think, 2016. And now Caudalie has come out with makeup. I did a poll and I asked you guys, you guys want to see a review on this. It's currently available in Europe. And about 50% of you guys said you wanted to see it. And like the other 50% was like, save your money. Now, I was quite interested. So I did decide to pick this up at Niche Beauty. So you can't buy this from the Caudalie website but niche beauty also had these items and they have were on a sale so i paid about 25 euros for each of these which i think is a decent price point but they are a little bit more expensive i would always recommend you to look if there is a sale just anywhere before i even start with the video i want to tell you guys that i've been sick for the past week so if i sound a little bit sick or if i look a little ill <laughs> It's because I have been sick, and this is the first time in about a week that I'm properly wearing makeup. I think it's nice to start with the skin tint first. I am going to translate a little bit from the Dutch website to English, so it's going to sound a little bit haphazard. But on the Dutch website, this retails for 33 euros and 40 cents. This is called the Vino Crush Tinted Cream. I got mine in the shade three. On the Trend Mood website, you actually see that there's only five shades, and I had a huge like bone to pick with Caudalie because I couldn't decide between shade two and shade three. And I think that for shade two, a lot of times the model looked very cool toned. And for shade three, I felt like the model was just like, I'm such a light skin color right now. Like it seemed a little bit too deep, but I do like bronzier tones and I was afraid for the undertone of shade two. I was well aware that this was gonna be darker, but I did decide to pick up shade three. Now each cream is made for all skin types. It says the key ingredient is gonna be hyaluronic acid, bio, grape water, and niacinamide. You can wear this every morning. It's non-comedogenic, dermatologist tested, vegan, 96% natural origin ingredients, and made of 100% recyclable packaging, bases of glass and plastic. Hyaluronic acid is made from 100% natural origins and made to smooth out the skin and hydration. The grape water, it says here, it should be hydrating, calming antioxidant a prebiotic and made to strengthen the skin barrier then you have niacinamide which is also known as vitamin b3 and that should lessen the appearance of pores but also calm the skin now again if you missed the intro this is going to be a little bit darker but i want to show you guys what this looks like on the skin what i want to do is i want to uh, i guess start with a very like thin layer because it is white pigmented i actually have worn this before so this is not going to be a first impression so this comes out white and then there's like small pigment spheres in here you actually do feel the pigment spheres you feel them like you're doing a face scrub of some kind and then when you blend it out you're gonna have a little bit of that bronzy tone if you're gonna do shade three for perfect application, I would recommend a dense brush, preferably one that's like this one. This is a Morphe one, but Refer also has the Refer 17, which is a similar brush, dense and flat. This way you can get all the pigment spheres. And this is a light layer of this product. And it's giving me like a bronzy tone. This is, if I do a thick layer of this, this is way too bronzy for me. But in case you also have a shade that's a little bit too deep for you, in any like foundation or skin tint, concealer often can help it. So I'm gonna put on a little bit of concealer. And going over some of like the redness that's still on my skin, cause you can actually see that because I did such a light layer, my redness, my freckles, everything is still peeking through. Now I do enjoy a very natural finish. But I admit, this is a very light layer. And I feel like I just look a little bit better if some of the redness is diffused just a tiny bit more. So this is my skin with the skin tint and a bit of concealer. I think there's just a little bit more balance to the face with the concealer with it. And I do look like I'm wearing maybe some self tanning. So I do like the result this is giving, but this is the skin tint and a bit of concealer. I want to go in with the bronzer. So this is the Vino Crush bronzer. Let's look a little bit on the website of what this one says. The Vino Crush long lasting bronzing powder only comes in one shade. So another abysmal shade range from Caudalie. But this is a natural sun kissed glow powder. It should fit with all skin colors and it should give you a pretty glow without a dewy finish. This one has grape pit oil and polyphenol. I think that's what it's called in English because of course 
I'm doing it in Dutch and translating it to English. Made from 97% natural ingredients, no perfume, dermatologist tested, vegan, ophthalmologist tested, and without talc. Also made from 100% recyclable packaging based on glass and plastic for a better planet. I actually really enjoy, by the way, the packaging of this. It's so sleek. I also really enjoy the color with the little grape, so a little Caudalie grape on top. But the packaging is sleek and even the little embossing you see the little glow and then you see the little grape embossing is a decent sized mirror so so far packaging wise i do really like it and like i said i bought this for 25 euros so i actually think the 25 euros is a decent price for what i paid for it i did get mine on a sale and i dipped my brush in once and it's quite pigmented and i think a lot of you guys will probably tell me that it is quite orange and I totally agree but let's blend it out because I did blend this out before and I thought it looked much prettier blended out you see that it's quite radiant and it's giving quite a nice sun-kissed glow so although it came across very orange I do think it blends out really well I'm gonna put a little bit on the eye sockets for a cohesive look and although you should probably do this with only your contour I am gonna be wild and put this around the nose area as well. I like highlighting the nose bridge. My skin is so textured right now, it's insane. I think it's because I was ill. So look at all the texture on the skin, it's crazy. And this is what the bronzer looks like. So far, I don't think it's texture enhancing, but it is quite glowing. So it, it is living up to its like claims. I'm gonna put on a little bit of my Glow Maximizer by Dior. I did a dedicated review on this. I'm absolutely in love with this product. I still use it a lot. Admittedly, I haven't been using it this week, but I can't wait to use it again. Typically, I don't put a cream or a liquid on top of a powder, but I just wanted to see how this, I don't know, works together. And honestly, it does look nice. It did take off some of my bronzer but nothing that I couldn't fix with a little bit more of the excess bronzer on this brush. Clearly, this is not gonna be a huge makeup day. I wanna keep it simple and just let the product shine, but so far I do look a bit more alive. I think now it's the time to put a little bit of powder on the face. I'm gonna be using my favorite powder brush from BK Beauty. This is a 113, together with my Charlotte Tilbury powder. Then I wanna go in with a little bit of mascara. Today I pulled the Victoria Beckham Beauty Fast Lash Mascara. It's gonna give me a little bit more volume. It's quite a wet formula, so although it's volumizing and lengthening, I do have to watch out. But it does act like a tubing mascara, so it's really easy to take off. And I'm too lazy to do my bottom lash line, so I'm just gonna go for the top. Oh, I cannot wait to put something on the lips. I have purchased one of the new Summer Fridays lip oils. I see them around on TikTok everywhere. I've had this for quite a while now, and I've been loving wearing it together with this Farah Midi lip liner in the shade Riche. Riche is the deeper shade that I have. And then going in with the lip oil by Summer Fridays in the shade Rosewood Nights. This is such a good shade. I did a short on this, but look at that. Ugh, I love a shade like this. I limited myself to only buying one. I quite enjoy the formula from Summer Fridays. I think it's a nice applicator and I really enjoy, I guess, the color. So I think the color is a really beautiful match and it's giving me quite a rich experience with the big applicator. I didn't think this was going to be tingling on the lips, so I had to kind of get used to that. Uh, it's not my favorite. I have some lip plumping glosses and they're also never my favorite i like my lip oils to be like very hydrating almost heavy to the lips because i need a lot of help especially now after i've been sick there's a lot of cracking on the lips so overall i think it's a good formula i think i do prefer the beauty butter balms that over the lip oils from summer fridays but it's nice to try something new from the brand, and I don't think it's a bad launch. This is the final look, and I do really enjoy how this came out. So let's talk a little bit about my final thoughts on the Caudalie products, because I think that's why we're here. The Caudalie cream, the tinted cream, um, I just hate the shade range. Now, you have a shade range of five, and I think a lot of times people are like, okay, if it's 
You could use it as flexible shades when it's a skin tint. I'll tell you, this is quite pigmented and I don't think it's that flexible. I think it looks okay on camera, but I'll tell you right now in real life, I, it is just, it's incredibly deep for me. So personally, I'm not a huge fan of the shade range. I think it's quite pigmented. So you can take that or leave that as you will. In terms of like their skincare properties, I don't buy my makeup for the skincare properties in there. Lately, I have been seeing a surge in my collection personally without me actually like trying of these skincare hybrids that are doing pretty well. So the technology is there. I do believe that you can make some great products that are both skincare and makeup infused. And I do think that I'm the customer for a product like this. Now I have a product similar to this already in my collection, which was one of my 2023 favorites, which is the Unisex Healthy Glow from Charlotte Tilbury. I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like on the hand. So this is the Unisex Healthy Glow by Charlotte Tilbury. Another one of those products that comes out white, and then when you blend it out, it becomes pigmented. This comes in one universal shade, another abysmal shade range, but like, hear me out, we're gonna be talking about texture next. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury one. You see it's quite runny, it's quite watery. And here you'll see the Vino Crush from Caudaline. And this already comes out different. It is much more stiff. You also feel the pigment balls. So you actually feel almost like a scrub on your hands. So they're not acting the same way. Then if you blend out the Charlotte Tilbury, it's quite easy to blend and smear across the face. It takes a little while to get the whiteness off, but in terms of blending it and using a little bit to go a long way over the skin, it's much easier to do. It is a lighter color, so let's put the color over here because I'm much wider there. It is a lighter color uh, than the Caudalie one, so it is an easier product for me to work with. The Caudalie one, you actually feel the grittiness of this. It's a much thicker cream. Also takes a while to blend out. If you do a thick layer of this, it has the ability to actually look a bit muddy on me, which happened before, and it's going to be a more neutral color, but much deeper in tone. See this? So here you see I'm kind of blended out. I think that the Caudalie one gives a more universally friendly color than the peach tones that are almost in the Charlotte Tilbury one, but the Charlotte Tilbury actually gives me a great flawless finish every single time with a little bit of a tint. I don't think it was made to be in any way, shape or form covering any of my imperfections, but it does a really nice job in kind of like blending out into the skin and making it all look kind of seamless and flawless. Whereas the Caudalie one struggles like wanting to be something, I don't know, like even if you see it here when I'm blending it out sometimes, these pigment spheres, they pop out, and then you have this smear of deeper, you know what I mean, like a deeper pigment. This one has the ability to kind of look muddy on the skin, so you're gonna, and it's, and it's harder to blend because it's a stiffer formula, so you are gonna fight with the formula a little bit. Then when it's on the skin, like right now, the Charlotte Tilbury one, because it's so watery, it's incredibly like flexible, blendable, and watery, this one kind of just like goes into the skin. I don't really feel it at the end of the day. I feel like it dries down. Whereas the Vino Crush by Caudalie, like right now, I still kind of feel it on the skin. Doing a very light layer like I did today is definitely the best success that I can get from a like a product like this, but the first time I used this, I wore a thicker layer. One, I looked almost like an Oompa Loompa. It just didn't look right on me, so a thicker layer didn't look good. And two, it like never sat down. Overall, do I think the product is bad? No, I don't think the product is bad at all. I actually think that I could get some good use out of this one. I just think that the color match is an issue. I think if you are drier in skin tone, you might like this one better than the Charlotte Tilbury one because it's just a little thicker of a formula. If you're looking for a skincare hybrid, it might be a fun product to try out. I don't necessarily like these color changing products, like just 
the by surprise i actually quite like the charlotte tilbury one i actually think the charlotte tilbury one gives a very nice finish i also am going to say that this one does give a nice finish too i mean look at the skin i am quite textured right now like compared to most of my other videos because i've been sick my immune system just really took a dip and you can see there there's a lot of texture on my skin but i don't think that i look bad i do think i look quite radiant and i do think i can make this color work for me if I include it with a concealer of some kind, I think maybe in the summer I'm going to try this out a little bit more. Do I think it replaced anything in my collection? No, I actually think that the Charlotte Tilbury one is a much better product for me. Now we've talked about the skin tint, let's talk a little bit about the bronzer. Now I have another bronzer in my collection that also is from a French company that has only one shade for like universally, like every single skin tone. I don't believe in that, but most of the bronzers since I I am light to medium complexion most of the bronzers do show up on me but I'm well aware that this is just not okay for this day and age the five shades for the Caudalie one is not okay and the one shade for a bronzer is not okay with that said let's go into the bronzer in itself and my first impressions this comes off quite um, pigmented and initially it does look quite orange in my opinion. It's a talc-free bronzer, so if you're looking for a talc-free bronzer, you're one of those people that really want your all your products to be talc-free. Um, it's nice to have options, right? So this is another option that you can potentially look at. Packaging-wise, I do really enjoy it. It's sleek, it's beautiful, and I actually really like the color of this. It has a decent sized mirror and the mirror works really well. And the glow in this is quite nice. Like it's not a flat matte, but there is some, I don't know, I guess skin-like properties and also skin blurring properties. In the end, blending it out, I actually think it looks much better than when I first applied it. When I first applied it, I was like, this is not gonna go anywhere. It's like way too warm, <laughs> it's orange, and like, this is not for me. I don't think it's a universal shade though. Let's be real, I think that there are people with warm skin tones. So my skin tone, I would consider neutral warm leaning. And I think that I can pull this off. And I think anyone with a warm skin tone and maybe even a neutral skin tone can pull this off. But I think if you're a cooler skin tone, you're probably not gonna like this color. I think maybe you'll pick this up if you like the packaging and the finish. And the finish is quite beautiful. It was easy to blend out. So in terms of formula, there's nothing really that I can say. Um, to deter you to buy this bronzer and I think price wise if you can get this on a sale like I did so 25 euro for each of these products I actually thought it was a really nice price point when we're looking at the 33 mark We're kind of tipping the scale on like is it worth it? Um, because we are looking at a higher price point. I think it's decent. I think it's nice. It's compact um, And if you are the customer for this and you're still interested after this review I'm gonna link everything down below I don't think that the Caudalie products are going to replace some of my holy grails But I am happy to see that Caudalie is dabbling into some of the makeup that they have so I'm not mad about it I'm maybe a little bit mad about the shade range, but I'm not mad about the products that they launched I'm still interested to see what Caudalie is launching for the future, hoping for a better shade range for the future. Maybe some lip glosses, I don't know. Let's just see what they come out with. But for now, I wanna thank you guys all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions that I forgot to answer, please make sure to use the comment section down below. I'm a small creator. I wanna take the time to also thank you guys for subscribing to my channel, if you already have, because I have recently like passed the 4,000 subscriber mark and it is not lost on me that this is um, huge for me. Like, I don't know. I I guess I, I didn't go into this with any expectations of like my growth but of course you want to see your channel grow and you want to see you have a connection with anyone <laughs> on the internet like uploading and getting no re response um, is incredibly discouraging but uploading and seeing this little community grow I don't know it warms my heart to a point where it's really difficult for me to even like convey in emotions but yeah I wanted to just sit down and also thank you guys so much for already subscribing and if you haven't already <laughs> I'm Sonia I like luxury beauty I like a mixture of doing these big luxury beauty houses like Chanel and Dior, but also going for kind of these smaller brands, kind of these more niche brands. Caudalie, I don't know where you put it, but it was just a fun, I guess, no makeup, makeup type of 
deal, which is kind of with a makeup aesthetic that I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go for simple style. I'm a mom, I'm a working mom. I'm always like out and about, have a hard time to put on a full face, but I do really enjoy makeup. So if that's something that you like, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and like connect with me and fall into all these weird rabbit holes with me. Like this video, by the way, if you do like this video, and of course have a beautiful, happy and healthy day, and I'll see you guys next time.